Hey, what's up everyone? It's J Dreamers. Have you ever taken a nap or gone to sleep and when you wake up, you're like, oh man, I can't believe how much time has passed. It feels to me like I've only been asleep for 10 seconds or 20 minutes, when in reality, six or eight hours have actually gone by. Well, that happened to me today, as it has happened to me many times throughout the course of my life, and I'm sure it's happened to some of you out there. And you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with anything? Well, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> um, the reason I bring this up is because when I woke up from my nap, I I felt like time – I've been thinking about time a lot, all right? And uh, one of the reasons that I've been thinking about time is, like I mentioned this morning with my good morning video, um, a lot of times I watch people's videos at twice the speed, um, especially people that kind of talk slow or what have you. Um, I can process everything they're saying and understand it uh, at twice the speed. However, whenever I hit the normal speed, if I need to like go back or and hear something a little slower, I'll hit normal speed and it's like they start talking in slow motion. It's it's one of the craziest things I've I've seen on YouTube. It's a really interesting experience, um, but that's normal speed. Just like the speed I'm talking at right now is normal. However, if you were watching this video at two times the speed and you got accustomed to how fast I was talking and your mind was processing it that quickly and then suddenly you hit normal speed, it would seem like I'm talking very slowly, <laughs> even though I'm really not talking that slow. Um, so yes, I was thinking about time and um, how time seems to speed up when we're sleeping. And I wondered why that is, as opposed to how uh, the time that's actually affecting our bodies as we sleep. So I started thinking about the dream world, and I started thinking about um, our spirit, our energy, um, still being connected to our body, in essence, but leaving and going to another realm or another dimension or another place where time is sped up compared to here. It's actually normal up there. If, if you – when you go to your dreams, people don't normally dream and fast forward, but in your dream – it is playing out at a normal rate of speed. But down here, that dream is actually playing out much faster or uh, much slower. I'm sorry. Um, and if you've seen the movie Inception, I think they do a really good job of explaining this, um, how time is different at every level of dream that they entered into. So anyways – um. I was thinking about obviously wherever we go when we dream is not the third dimension. It's not this world that we live in now that we're used to. So I don't know if it's the fourth dimension, but I could probably speculate and say that it's a slightly higher frequency than the frequency we're at now simply because time goes by much quicker at that level. And um, so I wondered what it would be like if, if, if I went to a denser state here, if time would actually slow down compared to right now, where we are now. So I kind of thought of an analogy. It would be somewhat like if I were to jump into a swimming pool. If, if you've ever been in like the deep end underwater in a swimming pool, you know that your actions are very slow. And if you were to try to talk underwater, there's no just talking at a normal rate of speed. <laughs> you can't do it underwater. Um, it, it's like you're talking in slow motion as well because you're trying to really force these words out into the, into the thickness of the water. So I kind of see it like that, like there's various density levels or dimensions or frequencies or what have you. So – um, I was thinking about time and how time seems to be somewhat malleable. And by malleable, I mean um, we have the ability to manipulate time. We can slow time down and we can speed time up. Now, 
I haven't put this into the thought of going back in time yet, but I'm not saying it's not possible. But we can slow time down, we could speed time up, and all of us, I think most of us, have done this at some point in our life. Um, I'll give you examples that I've thought of. For example, if you're going on a long road trip and you've never been to the destination, you've never been to wherever it is you're going, and you have no idea where you are, you've never taken that road, um, for me, when I first drove from Colorado Springs to Denver, it takes about an hour. But for me, because I've never taken that route before, it felt much longer than, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. It felt like it was taking two or three times that long to get there because I had no knowledge of that. I've never been there before. I've never experienced that before. But once I had gone there, then the, the drive home felt much quicker. And so time actually feels like it goes by faster or slower depending on what's going on up here or energetically within us. Um, what's another example? Oh, for those of you who have played sports, and I want to give a shout out to Jazz for giving us this analogy a while back, but when you become a master of your sport, it could be basketball, it could be football, it could be tennis, it could be whatever, when you've mastered the sport, when you have no when you can progress no more and you're playing against an opponent you can get into a zone and this doesn't just apply to sports this applies to work this applies to life this applies to many things but when you're playing a sport you get into a certain zone where you're at the peak of your game and it's like time slows down and you have you can see everyone else moving in slow motion but it's like you can sidestep them easily um it's, or it's kind of like neo in the matrix remember whenever um he gets it and he's reborn and he fights the agents and they're <laughs> they're doing all that and he's just like <laughs> he's like totally blocking but it's like it's so easy for him um so anyways time seems like it can be manipulated very easily and if we can manipulate time based on uh I would say subconsciously based on our vibrations that we have going on because I think our thoughts very much lead to our vibrations um, and our vibrations being our emotions as well because time flies when you're having fun, right? Anyways, so um, where did this lead me to? This led me to the biblical passage of... 1,000 years, it says in the Bible that a 1,000 years to us, or uh, wait, let me make sure I got it right. A 1,000 years to us is only one day to God. And this seemed like, a, this seemed like an appropriate equation. Um because it seems to me that higher beings tend to um, experience time quicker than we do, than lower beings, or even bigger beings and smaller beings. I mean, look at the lifespan of a fly compared to the lifespan of bigger creatures. I don't know that probably doesn't apply across the board, but I wanted to take that literally for a moment because I've been I've been researching the various gods of various religions and cultures and beliefs and historical records. I've been researching the Titans, the gods, the um, Aesir, the Vanir, uh, godlike beings, right? And beings that may live at a higher frequency than we do. And if that's the case, if that is an equation given to us, that a thousand years to us is only one day to a God, then I wanted to break that down. And I wanted to give you guys a better understanding of, of what that difference really is like. Because I think that that may be accurate. So, I broke it down. If one day is a thousand years, if one day to a God is a thousand years to us, then one hour to a God is is only 41 and a half years to us. 
one minute to a God is only nine months to us. One second to a God is 4.3 days to us. Now we're going to take it even further. Half a second to a God is 2.15 days to us. I'm reading my chart. A quarter of a second to a God, one-fourth of a second, is basically one day to us. So a quarter of a second to a God is one day to us. An eighth of a second to a God is 12 hours to us. One sixteenth of a second to a God is six hours to us. One thirty second one thirty second of a second is three hours to us. One sixty fourth of a second is one and a half hours to us. One one hundred and twenty eighth of a second is forty five minutes to us. <coughs> Excuse me. And one two hundred and fifty sixth of a second to a God is twenty four point five minutes to us. And the last one, one five hundred and one twelfth of a second to a God is 13 minutes to us. So, if you were to fast forward this video that you're watching 512 times its own speed, how long would it take for a God to watch it? One second. That's it. Uh, approximately a 15-minute a, a 15 video, somewhere in there, would only take a God one second to watch. It would only equate to one second at those higher frequency levels. So, for your viewing pleasure at the end of this video, I will be including a clip. Well, it's not really a clip. It's the entire movie called... I think it's called a B movie. It's like a Pixar movie or whatever. The whole movie sped up 512 times its original speed. And you would see how long it would take for a god at that frequency to watch it. Anyways, um, so I think that this may help to explain time differential, especially when it comes to simulation theory. Um, the thing that actually made me think about this is I was watching the show Black Mirror, and I forgot what the episode was called, but it was like a Christmas episode, and there was these two guys in a in a house, and they were having this conversation, and there was these these crazy stories that they were telling, but one guy would basically take um, a little metal piece and he would put it into like the head of the person that they were working with. And that little metal piece, they called it a cookie, and it would, uh, it was basically like um, artificial intelligence that learned everything about that person, their entire personality, their entire uh, everything about them, the way they are. It it made a copy of that person in program form, and then after a week, they were able to remove it, and it would completely mimic 100%. The person that they took it from they would put it into this little egg timer looking thing this little computer and then they could project a simulated version so they could look at, at the person and the person would wake up and go oh my god where am i where am i and they wouldn't know what's going on because they were an exact copy of the person they took it from but it was just all their mind it was a copy of their their personality it was a copy of them basically mentally and um they used that copy to be a slave for the actual person in order to control their house. It was so crazy because the, the person was connected to their house. Well, anyways, the person didn't want to do it at first. So what they would do is the guy would speed up time and give them like solitary time in this white room. And he would he'd be like, oh, you don't want to do it? All right, well, I'll see you in a week. Hit a button and for him, 10 seconds would pass. But for the person in the egg timer, a week would pass or six months would pass while he eats some toasts you know, on the outside world. Anyways, that's what made me think.
P.S. A couple other things I wanted to mention is that time-wise, you are watching my video in my timeline right now in the future. So, hello future. Um, but for you, you're actually looking back into the past right now at me. Hi, I'm in the past. Isn't that weird? Um, another thing is that in each one of our lives, we can sort of relate to this, especially those of you who have children. Right now, in the lives of my son and my daughter, who are much smaller than I am and much younger, I live in their past. Um, like, I live, especially in my son's life, I live right now in his earliest memories, um, just the highlights of things he will remember. And right now, I'm an old man in his eyes, even though in my eyes, I feel young and strong and in my prime. Um, so right now, I'm actually, I'm actually living his childhood. I'm living his past to him. And, um, once he catches up to where I am now, I'll be an old man. A very old man. <laughs> Either that or I'll be gone because I'm going whoosh, on a trip to the North and South Pole. Trust me. Um, but anyways, aside from people, people's lives that we know and timelines go, we also, we are also living in the future. Like each one of us is living in the future of a hundred years ago. You know, I mean, think about the early 1900s before there were even cars and paved roads and things of that nature. Look around and we're living in the future. I mean, I'm living in a future where I can record things and show them to you and even in an even further future and you can watch them and then you can leave me comments at present time at which I will read them. <laughs> and um, not only that, but it's kind of encouraging because right now you and I are also the past. We are creating the past. We are manipulating whatever is going on, whatever is going to happen in the future, far from now. We are, like I've said before, the ancient forefathers of a time way down the road from us. So all of the things that we do will echo in eternity. So everything you do is important. And that means that you, as an individual, are very important. Just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Glad to see you all again. See you next time.